Hi, this is Tasha Williamson. I'm candidate for mayor 2020. I'm rocking here with High End Radio, and I'm asking everybody who's joined us to rock that vote. Make sure you tell a friend and make sure you continue to watch them, uh, make them grow. Uh, this is an, a major, major, major uh, vote, and we need it. I'm the first black uh, woman to run for mayor, uh, and this is a black radio station, so make sure you watch them every single time. Thank you. Peace. So your your opponents, um, Scott Sherman, who is the Republican nominee, yes. uh, Todd Gloria, who, who won the Democratic seat, Barbara Bree, and then um, yourself. How will you differ from their stances on on trying to be elected uh, as mayor for the city? Yeah. Uh, so my stance is very different. I'm about action. Um, we don't need any more uh, data reports, studies. Uh, we need nothing else uh, to tell us uh, the things that we have done wrong. Uh, we need action. Uh, we need action to move forward, uh, to actually implement things. Um, we have a climate action plan that has not been implemented in 10 years, but we said we were going to do it. Uh, we have uh, so many things that were not implemented. Um, changing homelessness was supposed to be implemented. Uh, they botched it every single time they tried to implement something. They knew that hepatitis A was going to be an issue um, long before it killed 20 people. And um, it's all over uh, articles. Um, news reporters have talk, documented it and they have the proof uh, that people knew uh, before these people died that this was going to be an issue. And so I'm saying that how I differ, I'm going to take Scott Sherman. Scott Sherman believes that our police department is amazing and that he should use that police department uh, to increase enforcement um, on the poor. Uh, Todd Gloria uh, is, is, is a mouthpiece. Uh, he has broken some of his promises already. Uh, he is an assembly member currently over education, and as we talked about earlier, education has failed. He is supported heavily by the Police Officers Association, um, who has disproportionately impacted people of diverse cultures, especially black men and black women. Um, stopping them at alarming rates 200% more than white people uh, and also incarcerating them into jails uh, where we have the highest rate of deaths mm. in the state. Our jail system, San Diego, one of the finest cities in America, has the highest rate of in custody deaths and that's where our police are taking people. And so I'm saying we're going to stop that. Um, my other opponents are saying, well, we're going to figure it out. <laughs> We gotta mm -hmm. make sure we don't know right. if it's happening. All the data is there. I've read it. I've investigated it. I've mm -hmm. been in the streets and I've heard the stories. Uh, so you know what kind of candidate I am because you can see the history of what I've done, and that is often what Todd Gloria says. But his history does not show him supporting black people, supporting brown people, helping indigenous people. I'm not trying to honor someone with my mouth. I'm trying to honor them with my actions and make sure that we give back to the people by the hundreds of millions that we have divested out of their communities, that we make sure neighborhoods are thri neighborhoods are thriving, uh, that we make sure education is at its best like never before, and we cut that pipeline uh, at our neighborhoods, at the schools that we, our kids go to, making sure that we are looking at infrastructure maintenance so that we don't have the debacle that we had where we fixed a road and then it sunk in because the pipe bursted. Um, those are things that I'm talking about, that under their leadership, uh, these things have done and gotten by where we have a mayor who does not follow processes and if you look at the 2019 audit report for the city it says that we have a wage gap where blacks are paid at lesser rate than whites we have a uh, criminal activity that has happened because we had a no bid no contract for 60 million dollars this mayor has been getting through and by with things and committing criminal acts but yet calling us criminals and I'm saying no more you will have all all the things that you told me you wanted and needed and that I've seen you need and I will make sure it happens. I am an action-oriented person. I will give back to the people. I will make sure neighborhoods and individuals thrive. I will boom businesses, especially black, brown, and indigenous and immigrant businesses like never before because we are going to invest in you. Uh, we are going to repair the harms that we have done here in the city of San Diego and I am the only candidate that will do that. I am the only candidate that is talking about that and before I came on the scene they were only talking about scooters, bikes, and vacation rentals. They were never talking about your lives. <laughs> Come on. Um, and, with, and with that being
and said, um, Boom, and we are back. You already know what it is, your man, Mr. K for HighlandRadio.com, and I am still sitting here with San Diego's 2020 mayoral candidate, yes. uh, Tasha Williamson. Thank you. And, um, you know, let's talk about San Diego's police force. How can we create a more uh, diverse police force and if elected mayor, how would you change the way that our community is protected and served? Definitely. Uh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about uh, as your next mayor, um, I'm going to actually fire the chief. Uh, we talk, talk heavily about this um, on the campaign trail because he was the assistant chief uh, over patrol before he became the chief. Uh, he had full knowledge of the disparities that were happening uh, to people of diverse cultures, uh, especially uh, the heavy disparities uh, to blacks, mm -hmm. uh, include especially black men. Um, and he has not changed that. And, and so people are well aware that in my first 100 days, um, we are going to reform the police department, starting with the headache. Uh, and so we're not just talking about fire and leadership, um, but we're talking about changing policy, changing practices, getting more training for de-escalation, um, call and cover uh, training. And so making sure that uh, officers are preserving life uh, the best way they can uh, with more tools than they've ever had before uh, and not uh, having to aggressively go in. I think uh, that uh, people that are not law enforcement look uh, and they are impacted daily uh, by the use of force and the level of use of force that happens uh, in police departments, especially in San Diego. Um, we are going to decriminalize the poor here in the city of San Diego as well. Um, no longer using our police department to enforce um, poor people mm -hmm. um, in the manner in which they have. Now, you can't break laws. No, <laughs> you can't. Not. I'm not saying break laws. But what I'm saying is, is that we have used our police force um, to disproportionately impact uh, people of diverse cultures, especially blacks, and that will not happen. We have used them uh, to sweep up homeless people, and that will not happen. Um, we are going to make sure that our police department, our fire department, our lifeguard department um, is looking at bringing in diverse people um, at an alarming rate that they have never done because as we know that the diversity has been an issue um, in every one of those departments. The only black woman that is in the fire department is retiring next month. Um, so she is the only one in the 21st century. Uh, and so that is not something that we should be saying, right? Um, the lifeguards uh, are predominantly all white. Uh, and so we want to change that as well. We want to diversify and we're going to start uh, with our youth. Right, we're gonna start raising our youth up. Mm -hmm. So those youth that want to become law enforcement, uh, we're gonna start young, helping them get programming, helping them understand what law enforcement is, educating them on laws and trainings and things, how to write uh, reports and things like that, so that we're training them up, give them ride-alongs, do activities with them, um, making sure that they understand uh, what that role is gonna be when they get in, and also give them that cultural heritage understanding, mm -hmm. so that they are well versed in other cultures, uh, making sure that they have more than one language so there's not a barrier when they actually come. We want to start young. Um, they do it in other countries and we want to do it here in the city of San Diego, but we also want to uh, make sure that we bring people in. So when we talk about oversight, that oversight is going to be the community. Uh, many places all over the nation, especially in California, have oversight boards. Mm -hmm. um, they come from the community. 
uh, and that's what we want. We want an oversight commission. So we're going to have commissioners that have firing uh, practice, uh, have firing uh, power, as well as uh, charging power. So if there's going to be charges that mm -hmm. will be sent to the DA's office, uh, they will be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to make sure that we have an independent uh, CRB, which is coming up for vote mm -hmm. uh, in the November election and we want to make sure that you all are aware of it. It gives uh, the Citizens Review Board who is mm -hmm. the one that looks at all of the evidence on an officer um, and will send a recommendation uh, currently to the chief of either it is sustained that you know he did whatever he did or he didn't do whatever he did it's unsustained um, or not founded and that uh, goes to the chief and then it determines also do they think that he should be fired um, the chief makes that ultimate decision we're going to take that out of the chief's hands and we're going to make sure that um, the commission board has that final say yeah because I you know I no one should ever we can't question what an officer does and, and what someone does in the moment yeah. of when a crime happens or you know someone's waving a gun or whatever but we definitely need to be sure that we are looking at an officer's history and mm -hmm. what he was thinking when he pulled the gun out on somebody who didn't have one yeah. you know who was unarmed and then he shoots this person and he gets a slap on the wrist and is allowed to come back after work like it's the flu like mm -hmm. no I think there should be some definitely serious consequences to you being an officer who is upheld to protect and serve and uphold the law when you take someone else's life. Yeah, and we think it's very serious because we need to look at the suicide rate of officers and, and firemen and lifeguards as well. Um, because many people will think that uh, some officers shoot somebody and they go back to work and it's like, I'm back. Um, officers have a lot of uh, issues uh, after they shoot somebody and they become... Uh, addicted to alcohol yeah. and they become addicted to other things and um, they just their minds aren't right right and so we don't want to think but there are rogue officers yeah, of there are rogue officers who don't care mm -hmm. right uh, this is a strike on your shoulder mm -hmm. uh, those are the officers we want to get out yes, um, those are the officers that the first hundred days we'll be looking at with this commission board um, every officer's uh, records um, and we will be giving them a handshake and thanking them for their service and giving them a check to leave Mm. Um, and so I'm playing no games. There are no games. I want officers to know if you are a good officer and you've done your job and you do your job and you protect and you serve the people of this city, mm. uh, that we welcome you. We want you here. We want you to have a long career. But if you are a rogue officer, we're going to tell you goodbye because your career is going to end. So um, those are the things that we need to talk about because we have officers, you know, there's 33 media outlets that are doing reports on mm -hmm. officers all over the nation mm -hmm. um, that have been rogue, and we have a few here. Mm. Uh, and we have some that are still in law enforcement here. Uh, and, and so those are things that we need to deal with. And I'm not saying that uh, every officer is, is just gone. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm saying that we are going to look, we're going to interview people. We're going to interview them um, so we can find out where are you at? Did you change? Yes, or are you still the same? Because I don't need you here. And I need a department that is going to be serious about being a law enforcement officer, uh, that is going to be serious about making sure people feel comfortable um, and safe, not just from people outside that will commit crimes, but from law enforcement who have committed crimes. Yes, now. And I definitely thank you for um, coming on the show today, um, uh, gracing us with your presence. Thank you. San Diego's first, first African-American woman to run for mayor. We definitely have to get out in the streets and endorse March 3rd, right? Martin, we have to vote March, March 3rd. 3rd. March 3rd. That, that's, my gra that's my granny's birthday. All right. Are we, come feeling, on, come are we on. feeling real good about that? Now, people need to know they need to be registered by February 18th. Okay. Um, if you're not registered by February 18th, you can vote March 3rd and register March mm -hmm. 3rd. The ballot will be different. Um, now, this is another uh, tool that is used where people people's names won't be on the ballot so you won't may not be able to vote for uh, your school district uh, trust uh, school districts uh, member uh, for your district for schools for San Diego Unified you mm -hmm. may not have measures on that ballot mm -hmm. measures that will impact your lives uh, so make sure you you get registered um, on or before uh, February 18th um, it's important you can go online uh, to get registered at sdvote.com 
Uh, and if you want to support uh, Tasha Williamson financially, you can go to Act Blue, and it's Tasha Williamson dash one. Um, it would be Tasha Williamson for Mayor 2020. Uh, and you know, so keep up, keep up. We have forums and everything that's going on. Get educated. Look at the 2019 audit um, for the city of San Diego. Research Google. We have a wealth of information out there. Just make sure that you are caught up on everything so that you vote woke and rock that vote. Rock that vote and get out there and vote March 3rd uh, for Tasha Williamson for Mayor 2020. Um, register by February 18th so you can uh, get your votes mm -hmm. in. We definitely appreciate you. you coming thank on you. to the show. And, um, and thank all of you, too. Yes, and giving us the much-needed knowledge. So, Ms. Williamson, since you are the, uh, you are the 2020 uh, candidate for mayor, mm -hmm. Why should we, uh, why should the people of San Diego vote for you? Yeah. I'm asking the city of San Diego and all of the people in it uh, to vote for me because I'm a change agent, because I'm the one who has changed the game in politics on this campaign trail. I have changed the tone and the conversation already. Uh, I am the one with the least amount of money that has had to figure out how to get to forums and how to make it. And I've showed up and I've shifted the conversation. I will shift the way uh, this government has not taken care of people. I will make sure that we are not uh, making the rich richer and allowing people to pimp the poor. I will make sure that we give back to communities and neighborhoods who have never get, been given back to before who have been de-invested from, who have had prison pipelines. Uh, we will make sure uh, that economy is booming by reducing uh, barriers to employment here in the city level, increasing wages so there is no wage gap, making sure that uh, public safety is not just on law enforcement, fire, uh, and lifeguards, but that we are looking to communities who can also police themselves, that we know that data shows that when police officers officers are doing their work correctly and when communities are supported and they are able to take care of themselves that it reduces the pipeline to prison and it increases services and availabilities for people to thrive. I'm telling you that as your mayor I am going to change the entire structure of this system. I am going to invest in people. I am going to change systems and restructure government and it's going to be an open a transparent and an honest process. You will be sitting there beside me because you will be the decision makers. You will create the plan for you and your, your uh, districts. And I want you to know that I am the only one, the only one on this trail, this campaign trail, talking about people, making sure that we make sure people thrive, that you have everything you need, and that the rich is not against the poor and the middle class is not stuck uh, but saying that everybody in every social economic status uh, can have the ability to be lifted up and put in a position where they are successful and is sustainable. So if you want that, please vote for me. My name is Tasha Williamson. We need your vote. Rock that vote. Make sure they understand the power of the people because it is you who will decide, not an endorsement uh, by a party that has something to gain, uh, but, but an endorsement and a vote by the people who are tired of losing. My name is Tasha Williamson, vote March 3rd. March 3rd, I wanna be your next mayor for the city of San Diego.